This is, of course, the Thunder Mug or Chamber Pot. Uh, so this one, I think, has been glued back together, but we do find them completely intact, and probably they went to dump it, and whoops. <laughs> They weren't going to go back to get it. Um, <laughs> so this is called the seaweed pattern, um, and that's the yellow worm. Uh, that small one was probably more of a batter bowl, but it, it's possible it could have been for, for a child. Uh, but if you've ever seen um, the way they use the chamber pot, basically it's a wood chair. It's got a round circle and it's got a little shelf and that's where that went. In the middle of the winter, <laughs> that's where you went. Now you can imagine um, you're going to dump it out in the morning and mom might say, hey, take these eggshells, you know, <laughs> or, or maybe somebody broke a plate and take all that. And believe it or not, the eggshells, we still see them at the bottom. Uh, I've found fish scales. That's my one box. My wife moved stuff around. I couldn't find it. Uh, the one box I have deer antlers. I only found those once. And it's really nice, well preserved. Uh, cattle horns, cattle vertebrae. We find a lot of animal bones from the food that they were eating. Um, uh, we have a human tooth with a cavity, a really bad one. <laughs> uh, the toothbrushes were bone handled. Yep. Skeleton key. Uh, there's one silver dollar, which. It's rare to find coins. Once in a while you find an Indian head or a barber dime. This one, my friend filled the hole and I just happened to walk past it and saw this black circle. Uh, this is a gold-plated pocket watch. Now remember, the hole works from the inside, which would be iron. They were all encrusted. So what you do is you do electrolysis on it. Um, and, and it takes off all the rust. Don't try to open it, it's, it's glued shut. There's a match safe. Lots of uh, doll heads are very common to find. So the clay pipes, this is one of my favorites. This is, um, looks like a court jester, or maybe Punch and Judy. Um, most of them we find are plain. Some are pretty patriotic. This one has a, um, a ship and it's got an American flag on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two we dug in the old first ward of Buffalo, which is the Irish area, and it's got the heart with the crown, and this one says home rule, which the Irish wanted independence from England, mm -hmm. and that was their campaign. So, what else we got? That's like a molasses jug, Albany. This is what we call Albany slip glaze, this dark brown glaze. Here's one of the interesting quack medicine called Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Syrup. It was the number one baby killer. So this was used to, uh, for babies that were uh, teething, and it had opium in it. Now there's a couple scenarios. Either illiterate people did not read the directions, or the manufacturers, you know, <laughs> the help might have said, hey, why not put a couple more? You know, they may have put too much in there. So, um, yeah, the quack medicines are pretty interesting. I have, uh, one of my talks is patent medicine stamps of Western New York. So it's kind of based on the medicines that would have been produced in this area and the tax stamps that they had on them. Um, another 
one I do is like an antique road show where people bring in their items. I'll, I usually bring in a bunch of things, talk about the antique market today, and I do the appraisals. So, um, and I do have cards. Uh, this, anybody know what this is? Staring at this all day. Excellent. How did you know? <laughs> Where did you get yours? Uh, at an auction for $10. Really? And then I sold it on eBay for like 300 million. Wow. <laughs> what is it called? What is it? So, morning jewelry on it and everything. Yeah. So a memory jug was made after somebody died in, in their honor. They kind of took things that belonged to them and they cemented them to the jar. Now, there's also plausible that, and I've also read other stories where I think if they had like a 4-H club or something and it kept the kids busy, here's a bunch of junk, <laughs> glue it on there. Um, this one has some tokens, marbles, it's got peach pits. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just kind of bizarre. Um, there's a little, uh, there's buttons, there's a stopper from a bottle, there's a lock, there's a little um, dowel like uh, piece. So, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> quite the conversation piece, but that's the only one I've ever seen. <coughs> All right. Well, it's called, I mean, this is a capital dome, but that's oh, the design. Right. It looks pretty delicate to have come out of the ground that long. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously a lot, a lot of the glass is, is all shattered, especially like these glass. The glass is very thin. Uh, another thing, of course, you can imagine water gets in the bottles, mm -hmm. and then if it freezes, it's going to crack. Uh, tree roots, <laughs> some bottles you see the root going right through it. Cause, yeah, so a lot of things definitely don't survive. Others, it's, it's just a, a matter of <laughs> how it landed. And, and a lot of times these privies are filled with rocks. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Anything from colonial times at all? Colonial, not in Western New York, not here. Probably the earliest I've seen is about 1830s. You got to go east, you know. I mean, like Albany would be early. Yeah. I have a question. You, all this stuff you're finding, you were digging for the shelf. Yep. So. Here's the trick. I mean, at the beginning, like I said, it's, it's just, it's, you got your topsoil, then you got your ash, and then all of a sudden you hit that trash layer, and that's where you, you know, you're not going to be going like this. You're just gently pulling up. And then we have what, um, we'll have a spring steel rod that's about this big with a bar coming out horizontally, and we'll just pull into the a pile and gently pull out, yeah. And then we're going real slow, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you can't be just just pulling it, yep. All right, I'm, uh, I'm going to close with a poem, and then I'll take any more questions, all right. This one is called The Three Bears by Robert Service. Ma tried to wash her garden slacks, but she couldn't get them clean, and so she thought she'd soak them in a bucket of benzene. It worked all right. She wrung them out, then wondered what she'd do with that bucket load of high explosive residue. She knew it was dangerous to scatter her around, for Grandpa liked to throw his lit matches on the ground. Oh. <laughs> Somehow she didn't dare to pour it down the kitchen sink, and what the heck to do with it? Poor Ma just couldn't think. Then, 
nature seemed to give a clue as down the garden lot she spied the edifice that graced a solitary spot. Their palace of necessity, their family joy and pride, enshrined in morning glory vine with graded seats inside. Just like the cabin Goldilocks found occupied by three, but in this case, bear was spelled B-A-R-E. <laughs> a tiny seat for baby bear, a medium one for ma, a full size section sacred to the bear of old grandpa. <laughs> Well, Ma was mighty glad to get that worry off her mind, and hefting up that bucket so combustibly inclined, she hurried down the garden to that refuge so discreet and dumped the liquid menace right down the middle seat. <laughs> Next morning, old Grandpa arose. He made a hearty meal, and he sniffed the air and said, by gosh, how full of beans I feel. <laughs> Darn if I ain't as fresh as paint, my joy will be complete with just a quiet session on my usual morning seat <laughs> to smoke me pipe and meditate and maybe write a poem. For that's the time when bits of rhyme get jigging in me dome. He sat down on that special seat, slick shiny by his age, and looking like Walt Whitman, ate just a silver whiskered sage. He filled his corn cob to the brim, and he tapped it snugly down and chuckled. Of a perfect day, I reckon this a crown. He lit the weed, it soothed his need, it was so soft and sweet, and then he dropped the lighted match, clean through the metal seat. <laughs> His little grandchild, Rosalind, cried from the kitchen door, Oh, Ma, come quick! There's something wrong! I heard a dreadful roar! Oh, Ma, I see a sheet of flame! It's rising higher and higher! Oh, Mommy dear, I sadly fear our comfort cot is caught on fire. <laughs> Poor Ma was thrilled with horror at them words of Rosalind. She thought of Grandpa's matches and that bucket of benzene. So down the garden, geared on high, she ran with all her power. For regular was Grandpa, and she knew that it was his hour. Then, grasping, gasping Rosalind, she peered into the fire, a roaring, soaring furnace now, perhaps Grandpa's funeral pyre. Mm -hmm. But as them twain expressed their pain, they heard a hearty cheer. <laughs> Behold the old rapscallion squatting in the duck pond near. <laughs> His silver whiskers singed away a gosh almighty wreck with half a yard of toilet seat wrapped around his neck. <laughs> He cried, say, folks, oh, did you hear that mighty blowout I made? It scared me stiff. I hope you once wasn't much afraid. But now I best be crawling out of this dog-gosted wet for what I hope to figure out is what the heck I ate. <laughs> All right. So, um, la great. one last comment, and I'll take questions. Uh, you know, these are tangible pieces of the past. They make the history come alive. You know, my students love it, and of course, I love to share what we find uh, with historic societies. Um, we've had a display at the Brockport Library last year, so uh, it's it's history's alive. Okay. Any Questions, yes. Uh, yeah, I saw another Vietnam vet over here. We had in the back areas half uh, 55 gallon cans cut and a privy over the top of it. And you did your business, and it was somebody's uh, situation. We had to pull them out at the end of the day, put diesel fuel on them, and then burn them outside. Yeah. So many a sergeant lost and uh, was busted to a <laughs> private because he put too much diesel fuel on those 55 gallon cans and burned the whole privy down. <laughs> <laughs> 
wasn't me, but someone else had. <laughs> Yeah, our teenage prank as Halloween was to go tip those things over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when Dad used to say, well, they tipped it over, now we got to clean it out. <laughs> there was an island on Lake Erie across, near Ohio that was a Confederate uh, prison during Civil War. Oh, yeah. And when they did archaeology there, they showed that the uh, prisoners were digging, go inside the outhouse and trying to dig tunnels to escape. But can you imagine oh, jumping in there? That's a tough way to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the areas where it was populated, would the Sanborn map help you find? So there are Sanborn fire insurance maps. I don't know. I've tried, but I, I honestly think they do show outbuildings. I think a lot of them are probably chicken coops or sheds. I don't know that they're necessarily privies. It's possible they could show that. But then again, privies have been moved. Um, and honestly, when, when somebody tells me, hey, I, you know, I, I know where the privy still is, right? And we go there with the probe, and we can't even stick it in the ground. It's rock hard. So the best bet is, first of all, you know, you need a house that's pre-1900. I mean, obviously, it depends on each area when, when the indoor plumbing came in. But the smaller the yard, the easier it is to find, for sure. And then, you know, some yards, they're so small, we can't even find it. And it's, the yard is super small, white. Could be under the garage, could be under a shed. Property lines could have changed. Yes? So how do you search out a place to dig? Do you rely on word of mouth when somebody says, like, hey, I think I know where the is? Or do you? No, we don't. You Nobody, you know, most people are like, well, there's no privy in my yard. Well, yeah, your house is 1850. There's a privy in your yard. Yeah. They just <laughs> obviously don't know. Uh, basically, we, most of it's door knocking. We just ask permission for, you know, and that's, I mean, and, and then sometimes if people are interested in history, they say, oh, my, I bet my neighbor would let you, and so, yeah, word of mouth, but that's what we have to do a lot is yeah. try to knock. Um, if, uh, Maybe this gentleman would let me have a sheet of paper. If anybody, uh, if you have an old house and you're willing to let us um, have permission, I'll put a pen out. You just put your name and number, put the year of the house on there, and um, I'll contact you. Yes? How often do you do these digs? <laughs> uh, last time we dug was in January, so pretty much the ground isn't frozen yet. So if it's in the 30s, that's good. I mean, once it, obviously once it's in the 20s, the ground is frozen. It's a little tough. But you uh, do you do like three times a year, six times a year? Oh no. Twice a year. <laughs> uh, we try to get out every weekend, just oh, about. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm off in the summer. So usually at least try to go twice a week in the summer. It just depends. Um, I mean, I'm itching to get out now. Uh, the problem is the groundwater now. The ground, the water table's high. So. How, how long does it take you to complete one, or is that just? It, it varies. Um, usually at least three hours. But it, it could take longer if there's a lot of rocks, if, if it's deeper, just depends. But, yes. Do you count um, old irrigation ditches, canal outlets, um, drainage outlets, areas like that on occasion where nature might have filled in, where people might have tossed things early on? Tributaries. I haven't, haven't dug drainage ditches. Uh, I've been in dumps, um, but there is a dump in Lockport that there was a creek that they probably sent it underground and then they filled it. And that's what um, 
if you look at old maps, that Clinton Bailey dump used to be a pond. When you look at an old map, it was a pond, and that's why they filled it. Now, somebody from California was emailing me. Apparently, out there, tanneries. Hmm. Apparently, tanneries would soak hides in pits in the ground. And then maybe when the tannery was done, they had these holes, so they had to fill them with trash. So, yeah, I mean, any could, I mean, <laughs> garbage could be anywhere. And, you know, the bottles survive. Um, How about when they filled in the new canal by Magna Street City of Panama? That was uh, used to Yeah, but again, what year were they filling it? Was it... Was it the 50s? I think they were still open when I was a little kid. Part of it was still open. Yeah. That was well, it was used as a garbage. Yeah. Maybe. They stopped using it as a canal when they invented steam engines. Yeah. So, that so again, it's, a lot of times it's, it's, there's still be trash. It might, you know, be machine made stuff. But, you know, and again, it's, we dig where we can get permission. We can't yeah. just, Go in a public land and start taking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Old well, churches uh, that don't exist anymore on property. You know where those old churches are? They're probably the property back there. Yeah. Now that's a. I never done a church. The question is, would there be bottles in there? Yeah. But I mean, it's possible if they had <laughs> picnics or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and again, a lot of times maybe Grandpa was hiding from Grandpa that he was hit the bottle and there was a good place Get rid of it before awesome. you go to church. <laughs> What's that? Get rid of it before you go into church. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lynn and I dug a privy up in the Adirondacks at a trailhead one time and had to move the privy over. They had to move it. So, it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> it was all the way down. Doing trail work in the Adirondacks. Oh, okay. And they had to dug it and then moved it over. It was pretty oh. bad. <laughs> yeah, in, um, in Algonquin, north of Toronto, we call them thunder boxes. There's no structure, it's just a box with a lid, and you just open the lid. But it's actually nicer, I think, if, as long as it's not raining, because then you're not <laughs> kind of confined to the smell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yes. What do you teach, or was it already stated? I no, I, I teach science at uh, Orleans Post, he's in Medina. So we're a vocational high school, so I push into all the rooms and do science. Yeah. And when you did that dig that was on here, that was in Niagara Falls? Yeah, I used to work uh, with the alternative program, yeah. All right, well, did you have anything to do with that dig they did for that big hotel that used to be there? Where the uh, red jacket inn is now? Yeah, No, I, I saw that in the paper, and I, I don't I don't know that they even found much. Oh yeah, they did. Lots of little bits of things. Yeah, but I didn't. But they did part, find part of the foundation. That's what they're looking for. They want to see the footprint yeah. of the building. But as far as artifacts, well, they were joking because they said they found a dinosaur, and it was a little plastic one. Right, <laughs> right. Years ago, but, you know, they could find a few different things. Wiring and um, pieces of wiring for you can kind of tell when things were installed, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I saw that in the newspaper, but no, I was not, I was not involved. Just that. curious. Did you do you use that rapid service? Oh, for the kids? Or did you get out of the Board of Education for that? <laughs> no, I don't read it to the... <laughs> where, did, where do you get those probes? Those? So, the place I recommend is called Schlatters. S-C-H-L-A-T-T-E-R-S. They're about $25. It's, it's in Indiana. It's like a plumbing business. As far as I know, their website doesn't work, but get their phone number and call them. Um, I recommend, well, I guess it depends how tall you are. I mean, I'm six foot, so I'd recommend a good five foot because I think sometimes people can't find the privies because if the probe is too short, they're not able mm. to get down there far enough. But mm. whatever would be comfortable for you. Do you work all by yourself? Or do you no, I, I usually, usually at least three of us. And again, it's, 
And, well, especially like in the summer, it's hot. You just keep taking turns. But yeah, otherwise you get too sore. And then, you know, the whole thing is you're not just digging it. You gotta fill it, you gotta put the sod back. We tamp it down um, with the tamping. And it's, it's pretty involved. Um, yes. What are your favorite things to find? What are the, what, and what are the things you don't want to find? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to find human bones. <laughs> uh, favorite things to find. I, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I love any kind of colored bottles, especially the historic flasks. Um, I mean, a stoneware that's intact. But a lot of times it's that unexpected find that, you know, something we weren't expecting. Even just like the deer antlers. Um, it's just anything you know they weren't expecting to find is pretty neat. No gold rings or anything like that. I have not found <laughs> any gold. Um, you know, we there's only so much time in the day. We can't sift it all, and I mean we have detectors, but. The problem is, you know, there's lots of junk garbage in there. And what people need to understand is with the metal detector, anything metal is going to set it off. So that's that's the problem. Uh, but honestly, it's in that uh, use layer. That's where really you find the doll head, all the stuff, because that's where when they threw it or it fell, that's where it went, to the bottom. So usually in there, you would see it, but there are guys who have found it. I think uh, there's in New York City they found a, a monkey because you know they had the organ grinders, so, <laughs> monkey skeleton. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stories. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, some refreshments over here, so please feel free to uh, Are you really help yourself. Town no, somebody is there. Yeah, town from Crystal Beach. I kind of jumped there. I really couldn't have So I thought I asked you a couple of clubs. No, no. Okay. Were you in the Adirondack Club? Oh, yeah. That was the Adirondack Club for four years. Are you in the Adirondack Yeah, yeah. Were you there in the last year? Uh, we just got that report about oh. a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're there. Is that a huge thing, guys? Yeah. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, my wife and I just joined. I think that was a long time.